Hey everyone, this is Donna Prosser, Chief Clinical Officer with the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. I'm here today to bring you a little update on what's been happening with our actionable patient safety solutions, otherwise known as our apps. Now, those of you who have been with the movement for a while know that our apps are a summary of evidence-based practices. We focus on 18 specific patient safety challenges that pretty much all hospitals are dealing with. We now have 39 apps under those 18 categories. This content was historically created by volunteer clinicians and patient advocates once a year when all of the apps were revised at once. Now, I was hired as the first chief clinical officer here at the Patient Safety Movement Foundation in November of 2019. And one of the first things that I did was to talk to people across our network about our apps. What I was interested in is understanding what was working for them and what wasn't working and what we could do to improve. Now, overwhelmingly what I heard is that our apps are well respected and that organizations really appreciate not having to do this research themselves each year. They really like the detailed information that we provide and they don't wanna see that change. But one common request that we had was to include a clinical workflow or an infographic, something that would provide step-by-step -step direction for the frontline to easily know what to do in addition to having all of that detail in the narrative. We also had several requests to help organizations with specific information about how to implement the apps. Because as we all know, it's the integration of these best practices into existing processes that's really the hardest component of performance improvement. So in an effort to provide organizations with what they need, we have expanded our apps beyond just summaries of best practice. Our actionable patient safety solutions now include blueprints, education, and coaching. The blueprints include the evidence-based practices that were historically in the apps before, with the addition of a clinical workflow, a performance improvement plan, and specific information about what clinicians need to educate patients on. Now we're also building an educational library that will include videos, webinars, articles, and other content that we produce internally, but also we will provide links to amazing external resources as well. And for those organizations that don't have the resources to effectively manage performance improvement projects, we'll now be able to provide virtual coaching to project teams all over the globe. We can help them to analyze their current state and identify their safety gaps, as well as to design improvement plans and evaluate outcomes. So the blueprints and the educational resources are available for free download by anybody on our website, as long as they register with the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. Our virtual coaching is available for free to committed hospitals and also to hospitals that are not in our network for a fee. So as I mentioned earlier, in the past we revise our apps at the same time each year. But with the continued addition of all of our new content and the expansion of our apps, we've shifted to an ongoing monthly revision process. Now as you can see by this calendar, we plan to revise or develop new content for about four to six topics a month. Our fiscal year begins in April, so we started then with our new calendar and with the work groups for handoff communications, hand hygiene, ventilator-associated pneumonia, and non-ventilator healthcare-associated pneumonia. So each of those work groups spent the first month making recommendations for content revision. And we're really fortunate that this year, we have several interns who are helping us to take that content and their recommendations and add it into the new apps blueprint in addition to putting the content from last year into the new template. So we did that in April and then we spent May finalizing those revisions and getting the editor to create PDF documents so that we were able to publish these new apps on our website in June. This month is July, so our focus is in disseminating the information to our network through educational videos and blogs and all of the education resources that we discussed before. Now this process has been repeated each month since then with a new group of topics, and I think the work is flowing very smoothly. Olivia Longsbury is our clinical research coordinator, and she oversees this schedule. So if you're on a work group, you can expect to hear from her when it's time to schedule a call for this year. And once we've gone through the entire year, we'll begin again in 2021, and this process will remain ongoing. 
So there are many ways that work group members can help us with our new expanded apps program. As always, we welcome your help in researching best practice updates and making recommendations for edits to the blueprints. Now in the past, the work group had a little bit longer to work on these, but because of our new schedule, we really need to complete the initial edits within the first month. So please take note of the deadlines that Olivia shares with you so that we can stay on schedule. We are also going to need help from our experts to produce educational content. So if you're interested in recording a video, hosting a webinar, writing an article, or presenting at a conference, then please let us know, because we need all the help we can get. And finally, as we continue to grow our coaching program, we're also going to be looking for content matter experts as the need arises based upon the projects that we're working on. So if you have any questions about our now expanded actionable patient safety solutions or the worker process, then please let us know. Uh, as I mentioned, Olivia is going to be your main contact for correspondence, but please feel free to reach out to either of us if you have any questions. Thank you so much for your interest and support, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.